All right, hi. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. So, history books have taught us a lot about this man here. This is Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president. And he became president after um, an unfortunate incident with the 25th president, Mr. William McKinley. He was assassinated by an anarchist in uh, 1901 at the uh, World's Fair in Buffalo. And history's also taught us in school, we've learned that uh, Mr. Roosevelt was a peacemaker. He was very good at getting countries, their leaders who didn't like each other to get along. Uh, he brought the United States into world politics. Um, he was a big reason that we have the Panama Canal. He won a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and he's also a big reason we have national parks. He was uh, very fond of them and set aside quite a bit of land, um, you know, so that we could enjoy that. Now, if we dig even deeper than that, we'll find out that in his first week of office, he invited Booker T. Washington to come to the White House. And this was a big deal at the time because people didn't want a black man in the White House. And Southern voters were very upset uh, but he did it because that's what he believed. Uh, we may learn, if we dig deep enough, that he read up to three books a day. Uh, we might learn he was six years old and watched uh, President Lincoln's funeral procession out of his bedroom window. Uh, he loved to hunt. Another funny, kind of neat thing about Theodore Roosevelt is uh, on one of his hunts for black bears, um, he couldn't find any. Uh, there weren't any to shoot, so some of his people went and found one and then tied it to a tree. Uh, he didn't want to shoot it though. Um, so when that got back, he didn't think that was fair. Uh, when that got back to the United States, the press made a pretty big deal about it, about how nice he was. And somebody from his hometown actually created two stuffed bears that he called teddy bears. So he is the reason we have uh, teddy bears now. So. If we were to continue to dig through the story, we'll find out that on Valentine's Day of 1884, um, I think a day or two days after his first daughter, Alice Lee, was born, uh, his wife, Alice, died from Bright's disease. She had had complications uh, with the birth. 11 hours after that, his mother, Mitty, she also passed away uh, from typhoid fever. So that was a very rough day uh, for Mr. Roosevelt. Now, we may know all that stuff. We may have learned about that in school. We may have heard stories about that. But it may, you know, when I'm, when I'm researching something, it makes me want to dig even deeper. It makes me want to go even further into the story. It makes me want to find out more things about somebody like his daughter, who I knew nothing about. I didn't know he had a daughter. Um, how did she fare growing up without a mother? Her father eventually remarried. Did she get along with her stepmom? The answer is no to that one. Uh, did she behave while living in the White House? The answer is definitely no to that one. And it was fun to learn a little more about Teddy Roosevelt, but it was really cool to learn more about a woman I knew nothing about. Um, she, some of you may know, may not, she was a wild child, a rebel. She kept a snake, a garter snake that she found. Uh, she kept that in her pocket at all times. It was green, so she named it Emily Spinach, which I think is, that's, I mean, it's reasonable. Uh, she's a pagan who believed that Christianity was voodoo. She loved racing cars with men on the streets of Washington. She made bets with bookies all the time. And kind of a, a funny story, smoking's not funny, but her father caught her smoking in the White House, and he said, you will never again smoke underneath the White House roof. So she took to sneaking onto the White House roof to enjoy a cigarette every once in a while. So as we continue, we learn that Alice Lee was kind of a Kardashian of the early 1900s. She was the oldest. She had a lot of siblings. They were a lot younger than her. Um, her first big event while at the White House as, as the president's daughter was some form of a ball. And she wore a dress that was a blue color nobody had ever seen before. 
Um, and it made all the headlines and everybody talked about it. And it became so popular that actually that blue color right there became known as Alice Blue, and it's still called that today. And as you can read, in a span of 15 months, she went to 407 dinners, 300 parties, and 350 private balls, which is super Kardashian. So a famous quote, and I love this when I read this, especially because I have a daughter myself. Um, I can be president of the United States, or I can attend to Alice. I cannot possibly do both. That is when a reporter asked what he was going to do about all the trouble Alice was getting into. So other things about her as we continue on, uh, her wedding day, she cut the cake with a giant sword. Um, she was banned not once, but twice from the White House. Um, on her father's last day in the White House, she buried a voodoo doll in the front yard because she couldn't stand Taft. Uh, so he banned her from the White House. And then Wilson also banned her after, he told, or after she told a dirty joke about him uh, to the press. So she was banned twice. So as we continue on, if I can get this to work, there we go. As she aged, people loved her or they feared her. Everybody, uh, Republican, Democrat, they all enjoyed being around her. Um, some feared her and were very nice to her because they didn't want to get in her way. Um, she had two big quotes, fill what's empty, empty what's full and scratch where it itches was one of her big ones. And then she had the other one etched on a pillow. It said, if you haven't got anything good to say about anybody, come sit next to me. So those were her big things. She lived until she was 96, passed away in uh, 1980, and was still going to a lot of political events up until the day she died. So she was cool. And that's one of those things like, I would never have found that if I wouldn't have done some digging. And you know, if I were to ask, you know, why is it important for me um, if I'm going to take a risk and jump into the world of podcasts, um, there's, you know, obviously a sea full of hundreds of thousands of podcasts. And I could do a podcast on Theodore Roosevelt, uh, which has been done, uh, you know, hundreds of times, or I could do one on the lady who cut a cake with a sword and carried around a snake uh, and, and planted a voodoo doll in the White House lawn. Um, you know, I often say, uh, when I'm doing the podcast during the episode, I'll say something like, you know, we're learning together. A and, and that's the truth. I'll dive into a topic, and, and as I'm doing the episode, I'm still learning new things. Um, so it's a lot of fun uh, to do that. And, you know, the, the podcast covers weird history, crazy stories, and it's just become sort of an obsession of mine. Uh, I was not very good in school. Um, I, I went to school, uh, probably not for the right reasons, um, but I just didn't get it and I didn't dive into it like I should have. And so, like I said, as I've gotten older, uh, learning about things from the past has become um, quite the obsession for me. So as we move on, this trunk right here is the reason that I actually started doing the podcast. Um, this was, this belonged to my uh, great, great grandmother, uh, Gunhild, and she was born in Norway in 1866. Uh, at 18, she traveled from Norway by boat uh, to the United States, to Minnesota. And I like to, when I show this to people, I, I like to have them imagine what would you put in here if you had to suddenly leave your house? and move to a different country and leave behind everything you knew, what would you fit in here? Books, video game, a kid's sister, whatever you could put. And that's what she did and it was brave and uh, I feel very lucky to have it. This sat in my parents' storage unit for years and I wondered and I wondered what was in it. And then I took it home when the storage unit closed and it sat in my basement for years, and I never knew what was in it. I never opened it for some reason. I thought there'd be gold or something. Um, there was not. It was full of um, a lot of Bibles, both in English and Norwegian. Um, tons of family photos, like the cool black and white, kind of you know, neat old photos. Um, various Norwegian knickknacks, but it, you know, it had been passed down and used by many family members throughout the years. 
So I didn't know what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't the Bibles. But that's what I got. I'm not rich. I didn't become a millionaire. Uh, but what I did find inside was my, my great aunt and uncle had spent the 70s traveling the country, painstakingly putting together um, a family tree. And it was eye-opening to, to, open, you know, to, to fold this open and read it and know that I am a descendant of King Gudrad of Agdir, the hunting king. And he was a king in Norway back when years only had three digits instead of four. Um, and that was pretty cool to learn that maybe I had some kind of royal blood. You certainly don't need to bow or anything like that. There's no, <laughs> we don't have to go there. But that was something neat that I was able to pull out of here. And as we continue, this got me to talking to my father and asking him a lot of questions and l trying to learn as much as I could about our family. And it made me remember that when I was young, at Christmas time, my mom was the queen of, of Christmas decorations. And uh, my father would always pull out like one little shoe box and he'd take out these kind of dwarfy, not sure exactly what they were, but he would take them out, he'd set them out, he'd tell me how important they were to him, um, that they were Scandinavian, that they were very, very old. Um, and it got me to thinking about that, and I, I called him and we talked, and he's like, yeah, that's, you know, the, we called them, they were called Bogola, and they're, they're centuries old, and um, I tried looking them up on, on Google, and I couldn't find anything, and it, it, Bogola didn't mean anything in Norwegian or Finnish. And finally, I figured out they're Japanese, and they come in six packs uh, <laughs> from the Shiny Bright Company uh, in the 1940s. So he was bummed, but it, and it, they're still, they meant something to him. And, and it meant something to me that I was able to find them. Um, I have them now uh, hidden away because they're scary, kind of. But <laughs> it was important to me. So... I, those three things together and learning all that history are what together became the podcast and became my first episode. I talked about those three things and how they connect to family history and mythology and, and all that. And it's been fun. It's been fun to learn and, and, and really get into diving into stories and learning as much as I can. Whoa. So I guess the point of this um, TED Talk is kids, if you're out there, ask questions. Talk to your family members and do it while you can because they're not going to be around forever. Some of my favorite conversations with, you know, my grandma and grandpa before they passed were about things they did. And I, you know, even for adults, you're never too old uh, to learn new things. And it's, you know, something I've said is you can learn what the textbooks want you to learn, but if something grabs your attention, seek more information. You never know what you might find out. So, I'm just here to, to let the kids know that learning things in a history book can be boring. It might not be that fun, but there's a lot more to learn, and there's kind of cool stories hidden within those stories, and it's, uh, it's, it's neat to unearth them a little bit. So that'll be it for me. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Have a good night.